this is Martin Koisteman. I'm a senior software developer at Divio and a core developer of the open source project Django CMS. Today is the 28th of February 2016 and we'll be working with Django CMS version 3.2. This is the first of a series of screencasts designed to help you get the most from Django CMS. This series is aimed at developers with at least some familiarity with Python and, Django and the Django framework, but you're not required to be an expert in either. In this particular screencast, what we aim to do is create a new project from virtually nothing, then convert an existing open source template so that it is useful in a Django CMS project. In particular, I've selected this. It's a very nice um, template set by Start Bootstrap. Um, it's all open source um, and has a lot of really nice features and um, I just think it would be a great Django CMS template. Um, and for that reason we're going to call this, this you're going to see this is called Modern Business. So a lot of the um, names that you'll see me use throughout the screencast will be referencing Modern Business. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just open up my terminal. Um, you can see that I'm currently rooted at um, my current directory is desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new virtual environment. Um, if you develop with Python and Django, you must use virtual environments. If you don't, you will really hate yourself later. Um, I actually spent way too much time not using virtual environments when I started, and I didn't know why. Uh, once I've figured out how to use them. Anyway, so let's do that. I'm also using something called virtual env wrapper. So if I use some shell commands here that you're not familiar with, uh, it could be because I'm using virtual env wrapper. So let's just start. So make virtual environment. I'm going to call it modern business. And okay, so now I'm going to install with pip, pip install, um, Django CMS installer. And that will take a minute. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I can create a new, um, entirely new Django project, which includes Django CMS and a few other add-ons automatically, um, just by encanting the following. Django CMS minus P modern business modern business Basically, this command just tells the Django CMS installer to create a new project in a root folder called uh, Modern Business and with a base uh, folder of uh, the same name. And it's going to do so in my current directory, which is a desktop. So once it's finished, it will appear on my desktop. Uh, OK, it's going to ask me some questions. So I need to provide it access to my database. And if you have an existing database, you can actually um, point it directly in there um, using the, the URL format for providing not only the location of the database and the, and the um, uh, credentials, but, you know, <clears throat> anyway, we're not going to do that. We're going to do, uh, we're going to use the built, the, the uh, SQLite database, which is built into Django. Um, the reason we're doing that is twofold. One is it's super easy and convenient. We don't have to install anything new. And secondly, it means that all of the configuration that we put into our project will end up into a single file, which will be part of the project, and I can then, then share that with a Git repository somewhere. So I'm just going to hit return on that, and that will use the default. So for Django CMS, we're going to use 3.2. I'll just hit uh, stable. And then for Django version blah, 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 I'm going to use um, stable as well. Now, uh, this is for internationalization and localization. We're not going to do a great deal of this in this particular uh, screencast, but we want to make sure it's there for later ones. So I'm going to hit yes. Um, if your project uh, will never be used for localization or uh, internationalization, you may want to hit no here. The only reason that I would say that is because if you really don't want your URLs in your project to, to have a segment indicating the language code, then you're going to want to hit no here. Um, but I do recommend that if there's any chance of you using translations in your project in the future, you really should be using this now. 
Reversion. Okay, so install and configure reversion support. Reversion uh, comes from a package called Django Reversion, and it's a very useful package for basically providing undo and redo operations um, in Django. Uh, Django CMS uses this quite a bit so that you can do things like revert to an older version of a page. Uh, so we want to we want to hit yes here. Um, languages. Um, again, we're not going to do a lot of language in this particular uh, screencast, but later on we probably will. So I'm going to put a few in here, um, and it should be known that I only speak English. Uh, I dabbled in French, but not enough to speak it well. Um, time zone. Okay, so we're currently in uh, the East Coast of New York, uh, sorry, of uh, the United States, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that one. And um, do I want to use time zone support? Yes, I do. Um, if you ever work with dates in Django, you'll know uh, that you really need to have time zone support turned on. Um, permission management? Yeah, we're going to do that. <clears throat> do I want to use um, an existing bootstrap theme? I'm going to hit no here because the first thing we're going to do once we get this installed is start replacing anything that's there. And we don't want to use a custom template set and we don't want to create a starting page with examples. Okay, so Django CMS installer is now going to take all of those configurations and basically build out a valid Django project, um, which includes Django CMS. It's also going to install a few add-ons that people might like to use. Um, it's going to migrate all of that stuff um, as well for us. Um, I think first thing it's going to do is ask me yes for my username and password. Now, for any screencast, that I do where I record, um, you know, where, where, I, where I share the resulting database, I almost always use admin as the username and a password of simply password. All right, now we have a project on the desktop. Let's CD into that project and let's see if it runs. Now, normally I could just type in manage, run server, but I actually have another project running on the usual port 8000, so I'm just going to give it the um, extra parameter for the IP and the port, and we're going to run it on port 9000, so we'll see how that works. Port is already in use, maybe I'm using that somewhere else. Alright, let's do 8001. Alright, found one. Okay, so uh, that means we can go to localhost and then go to 8001 and we should have, and we do, a Django installation and I'm going to use admin and password and now we have uh, also a Django CMS install. I'll go ahead and save that password. Um, now since there's no content here, not even a single page to find, we're we're brought to uh, the new Django CMS wizard, which gives us the option of creating a new page. Um, let's go ahead and use it. So just hit next. And then we provide some basics. Page, oh, I'm going to call this home. Um, we can leave slug empty as it will it'll automatically create it for us. Um, we don't need any content. All right, so here's our home page. We have no theme, no template, nothing really useful. to. Oh, we do have templates, actually, but... These are like the default ones that come with Django CMS, um, and we have the single, a single page. And like I said earlier, you remember, because we turned on internationalization, we will be getting the language code segment here. Um, and uh, other than that, this is pretty straightforward. We have a single page. Okay, so let's get to business here. So what we want to do is we want to start converting this this site into this. Um, this is pretty fancy. It's got a nice carousel here. We've got some pretty cool panels here. Um, you know, this is pretty much all laid out. And got some neat stuff. We're not going to do all of this in the same screencast today, um, but we're just going to try to give you an idea of where we're going with all of this. Um, today we're going to probably build out just the home page and we're going to learn some concepts along the way. So let's get started. So I'm going to go to Start Bootstrap, and I'm going to find that particular template, which is down here, Modern Business. 
And now I'm going to download the files. And I'm going to open those files. Oops, over here. All right. So um, now I'm also going to open my project into PyCharm. So you can use any text editor you want. Um, obviously, you can't use something like Word or a rich text editor kind of thing. You need to really use a, a um, editor designed for coding. Um, PyCharm is, it has a community version, which is, um, I believe, free. Um, I'm using that right now. I think I'm actually using the professional version in trial mode right now, um, and you can too. Um, another favorite of mine is Sublime Text, which works on also Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, PyCharm also works on all of those. Um, but there are tons of other ones out there. I know on Windows you might want to use, um, what is it? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know what they are. Anyway, so, um, Here's my project now. Because I am using PyCharm, one of the one of the things I want to do is I want to set up my project interpreter to use my virtual env, and that means it'll have access to all the packages that I've installed, and that's going to be useful for things like command completion and navigation. <clears throat> okay, um, and you can see we have a pretty basic uh, Django project. If you are familiar with Django, you'll recognize the directory structure to some degree. We have a database, as we described earlier, we're using the file-based SQLite. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's look at settings. So you see, um, uh, let's see. Uh, in the settings, we have uh, basically a Django project, valid Django project, but we've installed via Django CMS installer a few things related specifically to Django CMS, and, and I'll kind of touch on some of those. Um, Django CMS installs a couple of uh, 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 processors, uh, sorry, templates and template processors, um, and loaders, looks like, maybe, no, I guess those are regular. Um, where This is um, Sekazai, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right. This is a tool that uh, uh, one of the core developers had built um, but it's useful for most Django projects, and it is um, uh, also required for installation. Um, some middleware classes, you can see we have one for the Appbook Reload middleware. We have some more down here for current, current user, current page, toolbar, language cookie, etc. And then a selection of built-in middleware classes. Um, installed apps. There's a few things that we require. As I mentioned, we do require Sekazai. We require Treebeard. That's how we manage our, our um, tree of pages and other things. Um, and then there's a couple of installed uh, plugins. Um, not all of these will we be using. In fact, I'm going to probably recommend... Well, well, we'll leave them all here. And then, of course, the main project is down here. You remember we talked about reversion, and since we said to install that, it is now installed here. And, of course, CMS itself. Menus is actually a companion package that comes along with Django CMS, and, it, and it's responsible for all the menus uh, in the system and menu template tags and breadcrumbs and so on and so forth. So it's part of the CMS project as well. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Oh, and Django CMS admin style. This is a requirement also, um, and this basically gives you a much more attractive admin, Django admin, when you're working with Django CMS. Um, some people use it just for their regular Django projects, um, even if they're not using CMS. Um, okay, so that's that. Remember, we configured three languages. Here are the, um, the various settings uh, that support languages. And here's our templates. I'm actually going to turn two of these off because we're not going to need them later. Uh, and I'll explain why when we get there. Um, permissions are on because we, we told it so. And then here's our database configuration. Um, pretty, pretty basic stuff. Um, let's see, what else? <clears throat> well, here's our templates. I just removed these two and I'm going to remove them from here now. Um, the reason I'm going to remove these is because... Uh, actually, I can show you over here. So here in um, 
uh, the the source template that we're going to start with, you can see that we have um, a full width here, but they also offer a sidebar page. Now, if you lay this out with Bootstrap, you're going to see that you're going to use the full width anyway, because you have to have a full width in order to get this heading up here with the breadcrumbs. And then over here, you'll have your column. And you might choose to put it here, you might choose to put it over here. But at the end of the day, it's simply a column that you specify in Bootstrap. So there's no need for us to have a separate template for that. You can have you know, any number of different formats uh, or layouts um, using Bootstrap. And I didn't want to, there's no need to maintain an extra template for that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I think, to start converting is I'm going to start with, let's see, did I already, okay, I opened this up already. We have inside the um, download that we got from Start Bootstrap, we have a number of things, templates, which are going to be very important, in particular this one, and um, then we also have some CSS, we have some fonts, we have something called Font Awesome. If you're not familiar with it, this is a basically a library of icons in font form. Um, I think it also distributes it in SVG. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Um, we have some other fonts. Again, these are all, well, these are glyph icon fonts, but uh, they're included there. And there's some custom JavaScript specifically for, um, for supporting Bootstrap and some of the components that Bootstrap have. Um, and that's one thing I really like about this this particular theme and this this template set is that it it doesn't have every you know different jQuery module under the sun in here. It's pretty straightforward and it leverages Bootstrap very well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is here's my project right, and I already have a static folder. I don't have anything in it right now. First thing I want to do is I want to copy my CSS. Font Awesome, Fonts, and JavaScript. I want to copy these and put them into static. I don't need to open them. Okay, so we should now have all uh, copies of all of those things now here in my project. <clears throat> and that's all well and good, and we're not using them yet. So how do we use them? Well, probably the easiest way is to start using the template. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and drag this template full width over here in my templates folder as well. Again, a copy of it. I don't want to affect this. I think we're done with this for now. I'm going to close it. Um, now we have uh, the ones that we're using in our project is really only full width. Um, there is a base, and full width uses that base. If you look over here, um, oh, well, maybe not. All right, well, there's a base template, and then there's, uh, oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's from the, the template set. And then full width, which is the template that came with Django CMS, leverages the base HTML. So our goal at this very moment is to basically use this template, which came from um, uh, Start Bootstrap as part of our theme. And we want to convert this into um, a Django CMS template. So as I mentioned before, the, the, the existing full width template that comes with Django CMS is split into two parts. So we're going to probably have to do that here. In fact, we are. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to look and see in this existing template, we have some things that are special, right? They're not just normal HTML5 markup. We have this template tag up here. It's a, it's a normal Django template tag, which says load these tag libraries. So we're going to need this. So let's go ahead and copy that over. And we're going to copy that into here. All right. Okay, we've just started converting that template into a Django CMS template. Um, what else we're going to need? We're going to need render block CSS. And this should go at the end of my head. So I'm going to jump over here, find the end of my head. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. All right. Um, render block is a tag that comes from Sekizai tags library. 
Um, and that basically what it allows you to do is throughout your project, throughout all the plugins and templates here and there and sub templates, temp sub templates and includes or whatever, you might define new blocks of CSS that you want to have included. And what this does is it kind of brings it all into one place. Um, so you define all these little bits of things that you might need throughout your project and then it slams it all into one area in your base template, basically. And we have something very similar for JavaScript. So we're going to copy this template tag, render block JS, and we're going to put that also into our new template. So I'm going to put that at the end of body, whereas the other one went at the end of head. Um, another thing we're going to do, very important, is you have to have this special template tag, CMS toolbar. And this really should be at the beginning of your body. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the body. And I'm going to slam that in right there. Okay. Um, what else? <clears throat> Title. All right. So, yeah, that's all good. Um, oh, menu. We're going to probably need a menu, right? Now, notice in Django CMS, the menu tag, which will show the menu of pages you defined and which are enabled to be visible, um, it is always placed inside of a UL tag. So let's just remember that. I'm going to copy the show menu template tag out from here and put it into here. So where would we put that? Um, where is the menu? Okay, the menu is currently right here. This is where the menu starts about services contact. And you can see that it starts with a UL tag. So this looks like the best place to do it. Now I'm going to eliminate all the hard-coded pages that are currently in the menu. And I'm just going to basically delete them. So jump down here until I get to the closing UL tag. And then slam that, that in there. So we got that now. All right. Look good. So let's go through this and see what else we can do. Um, okay, so this might be useful. So we currently um, have uh, this hard coded to en, but I think, let's see what we can put in there. Yeah, okay. So just to make sure we get it right, I just consulted my existing project. Um, so we can put language code in here. And now what that means is that the, the uh, HTML tag now has a, an attribute which will have the correct language code for the content that's actually showing um, instead of always being hard coded to e English. And that's great if we switch to French or German or whatever. Um, okay, so description. So we don't have anything here now, nor do we have anything for author. And... Um, we probably should fill that out and we could probably put, you know, your name, you could put your name there, whatever, your organization. But the description is probably going to change on a page by page basis. So we're going to use another template tag. This one's called, it's a CMS template tag, which is included in here. And it's called page attribute. Now what this will do is it will give you access to one of the attributes of this page that we're currently looking at. Now, this is the base template, so in theory, it'll be used for all pages. So by doing it this way, it means that it will have access to whatever page is being shown's description, um, and it will be, be able to put it right here for us. So that's very useful. Um, let's see what else. Um, okay, the title, Modern Business, and then Start Bootstrap Template. Um, okay, so maybe we'd want to put the page name here. Well, maybe we want to put that actually on the other side. So we might do, again, page attribute and then title. I think, let me just double check that. Page title, my bad. Page title, and then we can put a hyphen and then modern business. We're going to assume modern business is the name of our business, so that won't change very often. We probably don't need to encode that any, in any way. Um, let's see, other things we might want to look at. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, there's some other things we need to do. Like, first of all, you see we have these hard-coded references to statics. 
uh, static files. If you hear me say statics, I'm, I'm always referring to static files, things that never change. Um, and in this case, we have a reference to CMS. And then this is notice this is a relative URL. And that's what makes it work on the start bootstrap site for the preview. But that won't work in the world of Django because Django handles statics in a very particular way, which is all, it's all really good, um, but it is particular. And we could try to guess the directory and, and, and so on and so forth, but the correct way to do it is to actually reference these static files using the static tag. So you do that like this. You just basically refer to it like that, and then you close the tag, and now that file will be found in our static directory wherever it may, where, whatever, wherever we've configured it to be stored. Um, now the static tag is part of the static tags library, which I haven't included. Static, I'm sorry, static files template tag library. Um, so that's good. That means that it will now find the bootstrap CSS. Let's do the same thing for this one. There we go. Oops, that's just space. Don't want that. And we can do it for this one. Good. All right, so those are now going to be referenced off of the local file system, or in the case of a production system, they may be from a different server altogether. Um, and that's one of the wonderful things about Django. Um, these two things down here are actually um, not always required. As you can see, they're, they're only used under specific environments, and they are also absolute URLs from the internet. So we don't have to do much with those. We can leave them, leave them as they are. Um, down at the bottom of this, we are referencing two more static files, and so we're going to have to stitch those up, if you will. <coughs> All right. So these are our JavaScript files. You remember we moved these over as part of our initial setup, copying things over. And then, of course, we have our render block JS. So it will always include jQuery from here. It will always include the core bootstrap JavaScript from here, and then whatever else we've asked it to load will appear here. All right, super. So this is a working template. Um, maybe we can even view it. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and save it, and then we can come over here and see what we get. Okay, nothing. Why are we seeing nothing? Um, oh, maybe I should restart. Still nothing. Well, this is the base template. The full full width is what we have. I think that's what's in use here. Uh, maybe it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, and full width extends base HTML, so that should be working. Um, we have a block content. I'm gonna go ahead and include a block content in here. So, in base. Oh, I see what's going on. Uh, I've been modifying the template over here, not base. So I'm actually going to move. You know, I'm just going to rename this. Um, I'll rename this to dash orig. Why not? We'll probably delete it in a minute. And this one, I'm going to rename to base. Now there's stuff in here that we're going to move to full width, but we just want to preview it at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and start and make sure the templates are reloaded and then see if we get something. Nothing. Hmm. Um, oh, I know what's wrong. Because I renamed this, uh, PyCharm was trying to be smart for me, and it renamed my extends. Thanks very much, PyCharm. OK. Invalid block tag. I must have a typo somewhere. Bootstrap min. Oh, I forgot the word static. Alrighty, let's see what we get. Alright, already this looks quite a bit 
like this, right? I mean, we're, we're, it's really starting to shape up already. Um, we got the right fonts in place. We got the right margins. We got the right header at the top. It only has one page, home, because we've only defined one. Let's see what happens if we add another page. In this case, I'm going to add, uh, I'll use this. I'm going to add a new page about. And I'll add a new page services. Why not? All right. Now you can see that the menu is already working and showing us whatever pages that we have defined. Now, in true form, in true to form, uh, you know, looking at this, we don't see a home button here. This acts as our home button. So let's 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 get that set up. So first thing we want to do is probably disable home from the menu. I'm going to go to the pages um, panel here, and we see our three pages that we created. Um, and I'm just going to turn this out, turn this off from the menu, so it's no longer going to show in the menu. And if I reload, you can see we we no longer have that. So that's already a step in the right direction. The problem remains though that this was hard coded to a um, root URL. In fact, it says index. If you're looking at the bottom of my screen down here, uh, you'll see that it's, it's going to index.html. Uh, that's not even, you know, part of our URL scheme. So let's fix that. Um, here it is here where it says start bootstrap. I'm going to change this to modern business because, again, that's going to be our fictitious company name. And the href, I'm just going to put slash because that's always going to be our root URL. Um, now, this is a kind of a, a cheat because, as you might remember, we have language codes. Um, so the correct thing to do would be able to probably do that. And if I don't do that, then it means there's an extra internal redirect, um, which is probably okay um, for now. Later on, we're probably going to want to be a little bit more clever with that. But we're going to leave this now just the way it is. And we're going to reboot. I'm sorry, reload. And now if I click on this, you can see it goes to the root. And if I click on about, it goes to the about page, which is identical currently to, because everything's going to the same template base. And yeah, we do see that the uh, title bar is changing according to the page that we're on. That's promising. All right. So uh, we know from looking at the existing template that the first page really looks a little bit different than all the rest, right? The first page has no breadcrumb, it does not have the page title up there, it has it down here, um, and there's this big giant carousel here. So that's a little bit different than all of the rest of the pages. Um, as you can see as I go through here, we don't see any other page like that. So what we need to do is think about uh, how we would make that possible in our new template system. Right, so we have full width. I'm going to go ahead and close this original. We can just get rid of that. I'll even delete it. Um, delete. All right. And so we have the full width, which is, is effectively empty, and we have base. Now, in the base, um, we know we're always going to have this start bootstrap thing up here with the menu. That's on every page. So we'll keep that in the base. Um, that also makes makes it easy because we have the CMS toolbar, which has to be everywhere, has to be on every page, is always going to be there. But when we get down here to the page container, we can see we have things that maybe don't make sense for every page. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in fact, the container itself, uh, I would like to stop for just one second and, and explain something about Bootstrap. If Hopefully you guys are familiar with Bootstrap. Uh, if you're not, um, Bootstrap, the grid system, works by having an outer container and then inside of that a row and inside of that row any number of columns. And you can have as many rows as you like as well, but that's the core like base grid unit is you have container, then you have row, and then you have your columns. Now, if I knew that all of my pages were always going to be inside of this inner column, like this, this full width column, right? And nothing's gonna be leaking out here to the sides um, ever, then I could probably design my templates to basically put everything in the same container. 
But I know from looking at this source template that at least one thing is going to be stretched out uh, outside of the the inner column for everything, right? The you know into the margin. Um, so in order for me to do this, I will have to use uh, a specific container that is styled to allow things to go outside of the mar into the margins. Um, and you know what? I might want to. You know, I'm creating this template uh, for this screencast, but it could very well be that when I use this site, I may want to put a fancy graphic behind maybe the service panel section that goes all the way edge to edge, right? Maybe all the content stays in the middle, but the 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 background graphic goes edge to edge, or maybe I want to do that, you know, on the contact section. I don't know. But I really want to have that flexibility, is what I'm saying. I I know I already need it for the front page. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to instead of creating a single container for every page, I'm going to allow each page to find its own containers. That'll be a little bit more work for me when I'm laying out my content later, because it means I have to create my own container for each section and maybe add my own rows, whatever. But it's not it's not a big deal, and um, I get a lot of flexibility in the long run. So based on this this desire to have the flexibility of, of defining our own containers whenever we like, we need to make sure that we're not embedding containers into the default templates here or our, our, our main templates. Um, so in some cases it makes sense to keep them. So like in the navigation, which is going to be on every page, I don't mind having the container there. And to be honest, I think we're also going to add, um, see we have a footer up here currently. Uh, I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to put it down here. Now, I can tell by looking at this markup that um, you can see that the footer is a container, um, uh, perhaps styled that way in the CSS. And inside of it is a row. We're going to move that outside of this thing. And I'm going to take all of the remaining uh, content and I'm going to take it out of this template. And in, in its place, I'm going to put block content and block. Now this is standard Django and it basically says whenever you see um, a block defined as in this case content in a subclassing uh, template then replace this stuff here with that content. So the um, full width subclasses base uh, you can see because we extend base and it has a template, uh, sorry, it has a block called content, and that will basically replace what anything that's in here, uh, sorry, anything that's in here will replace what is right here. So this is how the template systems work in Django, uh, and Django CMS works perfectly well alongside that. So ultimately, we're going to want to put all that stuff I cut out here, but we're going to make some changes to it. So I'm going to put it in here now. And you remember, we, we discussed how we don't really want to embed containers. So I, do, I know I don't need that. Um, and what do we have here? We have, this is the page title. Oh wait, you know what? We do need that container because it's going to be the page title on this page. But what I don't want to do is extend that container all the way into my um, the rest of my content. So I'm going to go ahead and close that container. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a placeholder. Um, now a placeholder is a Django CMS concept and basically this is where all plugins will ultimately be created and, and, and we'll work with them. Um, so let me just make sure I'm using the right one. Uh, we're going to call this particular one um, content as well. So it, it has the same name as um, the block that we're in, but that's okay because the, the block is all about Django, placeholder is all about Django CMS. Now we're going to use a special, normally you just do that and you just take this off and, and you're done, right? Um, we're going to take, we're going to use an extended form of this. So there's an extended form which is where you can use a closing uh, placeholder um, tag and, sorry, end placeholder and if you put an or here, basically what it'll do is it'll say, show the contents of the placeholder here, 
But if there is no contents defined, then show whatever is between these two tags, these two template tags. So it's here that we're going to put the default content. Um, now we've already put the title and so on and stuff up here. We don't need that again. I don't know why that was in my clipboard. Um, and the default template will include its own container, its own row, and some default text. And I'm going to move that to the base. So I'll look over here to base and we'll put that before the footer. All right. Actually, we'll put that in the footer. Uh, There we go. Okay, so now we have a base template which includes pretty much nothing but the navigation and the footer. And then we have the full width where we put the, the, the your basic page header. And then we have a place for you to put your own content. Now, we already know that there's at least one page that doesn't use this default header. And that would be for the home page. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to now duplicate this template uh, copy and then I'm going to paste it in here. <clears throat> I'm going to call it home. And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to leave everything the same except I'm going to take out the top container which contains the header. Okay. So now this one will just jump right into the content that we want on the front page minus the header. And I'm going to get rid of some of these. Well, I'll leave them in there. Why not? No, I'm gonna take that. Okay, so now we have a template for. Oh, we don't need this one. Template for home, a very similar one for. That's not supposed to be in there. Take these comments out. This is the generic full width one, and it contains like more full featured, if you will. It has the built-in header. I'll go ahead and take these rows, this this comment out, this comment out. All right. So <clears throat> now in the um, well, let's look at it. Let's look and see what we have now. So, oops. Let me refresh this. A um, couple of things. I see that the footer doesn't seem to be acting correctly. Maybe I made the incorrect assumption about um, what the footer is styled with. And just to check, I'm going to check my. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I made some mistakes with that. Um, but now let's change the. We're on the. We're on the home page. I'm going to change the template to. Oh, I have to add it first. So let's go to my settings. And here we're going to add home.html and we'll call it home. All right, so restart and change the template to home. Okay, so now we can see there's just nothing there. And this is the, the core, I mean, this is the default text that we configured here. So if there's nothing in our placeholder, then it will show this, and it's doing that quite well. Now, one thing I just I, I, I mentioned is probably not working correctly is is this footer. Let's fix that. So we know that's only in the in the base HTML, so we only have to fix it once. And the mistake I made was um, basically just assuming anything about the footer. Uh, it is not really. Any, it doesn't really it doesn't really act as a container. In fact, I should have known that because I took it out of a container. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to take everything out of there. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in something called a static placeholder. And I'm going to call this footer. What is a static placeholder? A static placeholder acts just like a regular placeholder. Uh, which is a place where we put plugins and, and uh, well, we put plugins into it. The difference is that it's the same everywhere it's located. So if I'm on the home page and I put a plugin into the footer, then when I go to the about page, which also includes the same static placeholder with the same name, that plugin will already be there. Um, it's like the same 
all the same content everywhere the particular placeholder called footer is because it's a static placeholder. All right, so that's that. So let me go ahead and save that and let's reload the page and we should have no footer now. Um, and now, now we can build the footer uh, on the front end. So we don't have to do it in the markup anymore. So the way we can do that is we can go to structure mode and you can see we have two placeholders. We have a placeholder up here called content and that corresponds to this. And then at the bottom we have the static placeholder which corresponds to this. Um, notice a little thumbtack icon, that means it's a static placeholder. And so anything you put here will be available anywhere else this particular static placeholder is already present. Um, I want to go ahead and put some things in there. Um, now I need to build up a, uh, you know, I need to build up the, the, the grid for this footer and that includes a container, it includes a row, it includes a column, and then I want to put my text in there, copyright, whatever, and I might want to also put a heading rule in there. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to be able to create a container. So I'm actually going to stop on the front end for just a second, and we're going to go back to Django world and Python world, and I'm going to install pip install Aldrin style. Aldrin style is a very simple add-on or plugin, and uh, its sole job is to basically allow you to create predefined types of markup, uh, which you can use as wrappers for other things. Um, so I've now installed it into my virtual EMV. I need to make sure that I put it into my settings, into my installed apps. Put that here. Aldrin style. I happen to know that it also requires migration, so I'm going to manage um, first of all make migrations make sure that everything is up to date ah, okay so I just installed Aldrin style which defines a style plugin and I could have probably used the uh, Django CMS style plugin which is already installed but I prefer to use the Aldrin one because it's it's um, uh, got some additional features which I like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to comment this out for just a second, all right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just to clean up my database a little bit and get rid of any any old data structures related to Django CMS style. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manage migrate Django CMS style zero, and that'll just unmigrate it. And then I'm going to comment out the old one. The one, well, I'll delete it. And I'm even going to update my virtual EMV. I'm going to pip uninstall it. Uh, Django CMS style. Yes. All right. So I still already have the Aldrin style there. I've now uninstalled and even unmigrated um, the other. So I can comment this one back in. And then I can go back to where I was, which is just to make sure that all the migrations for the project are, are up to date. So we're going to do make migrations. Just make sure everything's okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I forgot an R. Okay. So it looks like uh, the Aldrin style is missing a migration. Um, that may actually be my fault. I think I'm the last person to make a commit there. But anyway, um, it's now installed. It's now my, I need to migrate it. Manage, migrate, migrate everything. And next thing to do is use it. So I'm going to go back to running my project, which I believe is on 8001. All right. Now, I should now be able to go and find this style tag this it? Yeah. Okay, so here's the style tag. Um, and uh, I can create a container. Uh, this is just predefined in, the, in its own settings. There's three that it uses. To be honest, I don't use this for hardly any other, any other things. It comes in handy from time to time. Um, the built-in class names you can configure with a setting uh, in your settings if you want. Um, but you can also just override it by typing in you can maybe set this to nothing and then type in whatever classes you need. 
Um, it also has the ability of you defining which tag type you want to use up here um, and some other stuff. Uh, so we're just going to use regular div and we're going to use a container class and that'll give us our container. So um, there we go. Now the next thing I need to do is add a row. A, uh, this is a bootstrap three row. Now I could use that tag again and create a div and then give it a class of row, but there's an easier way. Um, because we're dealing with Bootstrap 3, um, we're fortunate that there is already a package which provides a lot of the Bootstrap 3 things that you might need. Um, different components, you know, panels, uh, carousels, etc. So let's go ahead and get that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break out of here. I'm going to pip install Aldrin um, Bootstrap 3. Now this actually has some sub-dependencies like Filer, and Filer has its own dependencies like um, uh, Thumbnailer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the um, project so we can look at the installation instructions, make sure we're getting it right. Uh, read the docs, install. Um, we've already pip installed it, and that should have also gotten our dependencies, but we still need to configure those dependencies into our project. Um, yeah. Well, one of those dependencies is, of course, uh, Filer and um, and then Thumbnailer as well. So I'm going to actually copy these from the existing project that I have just to speed things up. We know we need to have the thumbnail processors for, for Filer, so here we go. Now, um, this basically just overrides the Thumbnailer set of processors, thumbnail processors, with one that gives it this, this one right here, which is, is pretty cool, really. Um, and that basically allows you to, to have a smarter cropping. Um, and the other thing we're going to need, of course, is to put this stuff into our installed uh, apps. So we need four packages in installed apps. Easy Thumbnails, which is a dependency of Filer, Django Filer. Um, MPTT is another dependency of Filer. I'll put that up here. And Filer, of course, itself. And then, of course, Aldrin Bootstrap 3. Um, I think that's all we have to do. So let's find out. Um, manage. Uh, let's do just a CMS check. See if that tells us anything useful. Okay, everything looks good so far. So now let's do manage migrate. That'll migrate the new packages that we've installed. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Okay, so you can see Filer, thumbna Easy Thumbnails, and uh, Alden Bootstrap are all now migrated. So now we can run this going back to Run Server. And we'll go back to our project. And we'll reload. Everything still works. That's great. Now I should have some new plugins that were provided by Alden Bootstrap. So inside my inside my style. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name container um, just so you can see what it is and what purpose it serves. Um, so inside of our container we're going and we don't have the bootstrap add-ons here. I'm going to use the row plugin. Okay. Now I only want one row uh, here and then in that one row I want to have one column that goes from edge to edge. Now hopefully you know enough about bootstrap to know that it uses a mobile first strategy. So basically your your narrowest screen is where things start. So I can basically create a full width column just by typing in 12 here because this is based on 12 column layout. And um, since this is the mobile uh, um, size uh, breakpoint, um, if we put 12 here it'll be full screen the whole time and uh, I can just hit save. Now this will actually create an additional plugin for me inside of it, in this case the column that I specified, and of course that will have the size that I specified. So we now have the container, we have the row, and we have the column. Now let's go ahead and add our footer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to text, and I'm going to add a heading rule, and then I'm going to put copyright um, G, uh, sorry, option G, 
uh, copyright symbol. 2016, all rights reserved. Uh, reserved. Um, that's fine. And we'll hit save. Now that should be available on every page. And you can see now it fits nicely into the center column um, of the page and has a nice heading rule, much like we had over here. Now there's actually a little bit more space. We could probably fix that just by putting an extra new line in. Looks pretty close now. All right. So this is our home page. We have nothing here. Um, but we have uh, this default text and we have a footer. Okay, so uh, let's add some content to our home page. Um, we can look over here at our source and we can see that we have this fancy carousel. We're not going to do that today. We're going to do that in, in another screencast. And then of course we have uh, some other content down here which looks to be mostly just normal Bootstrap 3 components. Now truth be said, the carousel is also a standard Bootstrap 3 component, but this one is styled a little bit uniquely, and um, that's why we're not going to do it in this particular screencast. We'll do it in another one. Um, so anyway, looking here, we need to create a new section for Welcome to Modern Business. I'll just go ahead and copy that text. Um, and I notice that there's a heading rule underneath here, but if I look at the source, I don't see a heading rule. So that means that the, the line is actually part of the style of the header uh, of the h1 tag when it has the the page header um, class so that's interesting let's see if we can deal with that so I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna go to structure mode I'm gonna create a new container using our style tag and I'm gonna go ahead and call this welcome so I can find it later and then I'm gonna add to that a row and I'm going to, we only need one column that goes all the way across for this. So we've done that. And then we're going to add some text. Text. And that text is going to be Welcome to Modern Business. Um, and it's H1. And if we look at the source over here, we see that it is indeed H1. Now, if I do it just like this, we'll get a nice header, but it won't have the, the rule underneath. Now, this rule over here is part of the footer, you'll remember. We did a few moments ago. Uh, so let's let's try to do it again where we add that class. So I'm just going to double click on that and I'm going to manually add this class. Um, this is not how we would normally do things but I'm just going to do it just to prove the point first. Page header and then hit save and then when the page refreshes you can see we now have the exact same uh, uh, rule going across uh, underneath the title um, just like the original design and that's because it's part of the original design style sheets and I'm really trying hard Not to have to add my own styles and JavaScript so far We'll, we'll we probably will have to do a little bit of that, but I want to avoid it as much as possible um, So we know that this is what we're going to need now How could I make this a little bit more legitimate than asking my content managers to go into here and edit? Uh, some class on some markup they might not even know anything about HTML or CSS so we wouldn't really want to do that so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that for now now the way we can fix that is I'm gonna go to my settings and I'm gonna go to the bottom and I'm gonna copy and paste some settings uh, from uh, earlier this is um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own setting inside of the editor that we use in Django CMS so that it's just a you know a simple option that your content managers can use to get the effect that, that, that you want and in this case um, now there's a lot of stuff here and I'm only showing you because this stuff here is the normal settings um, but I've commented them out just so you can see that there this is where you can define things like the buttons that show up and let me, let me go ahead and bring that up you can see the different buttons that are here, undo, redo, the, the plugins for the CMS, and here's the show blocks, and here's the format, etc. So you can see that here, undo, redo, CMS plugins, show blocks, format styles, etc. Um, if you wanted to modify the way your CK editor appears for your people, your content managers, you're, you could do that by affecting this. I've commented it all out because I want to use the standard basic stuff. Um, I'll leave it here for now. Um, but down here, uh, st style set uh, is a special dict that you can declare 
that will define things that will appear in here. Now, the ones that are here now are the ones that normally come with the CK editor. Um, we don't need these. We don't need marker. Don't need special container. Italic subtitle is not really part of, of the theme that we're doing. Um, so I'm going to basically create my own. And in this case, it's going to be called page header h1, page a, page header h2, etc. And basically, what it does is when you when you choose that on a block of text, is it will use the element that you define here to wrap the text, and then it will provide uh, attributes on that element uh, as defined here. In this case, we want a class a page header, and you can see it's pretty straightforward and easy. Now, I've also included a couple that I find useful, uh, especially if you're doing a technical type of website, which is to do code. Um, so you might you might want to have like a, a bit of code that is uh, um, you know in in uh, mono proportional fonts. I I do that. Uh, it's not important for this, but there you go. Anyway, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna save those settings, and now when I refresh the page, it will restart the CMS and use those settings. Um, and now if I click on this, we have different styles here. We now have page header H1, page header H2, etc., and a code block. And then we have an inline style for for inline code. Um, so for this particular one, I'm just going to click here and then go to page header h1. And now this is indeed page header h1. So if I hit save now, that text will automatically have the correct class, which will give it the right appearance that we want. So that's cool. Let's see what do we need to add next. Next we have these panels. Now these are normal Bootstrap three panels. They contain an icon, they contain uh, a title or a label, they have a block of text, I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and then a button. Um, so we can recreate this in here. So I'm going to close this row because we're done with it. I'm going to create a new row and this row will be a normal row, but I'm going to tell it to make three columns. Each of them, starting with the widest, will have four of the 12 columns or a third of the page across. Just, just like this one, we have three columns. So each one is going to be four of 12 or one third. And when it gets a little bit smaller, it'll still be one third. And even when if it gets a little bit smaller than that, I'll make it a third. But when it gets all the way to the bottom, on, on a, like a mobile, I'm going to tell it to use a full width for each one of these. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with Bootstrap 3, it would be obvious why I did that. Um, uh, if you're not that familiar with Bootstrap 3, uh, this just gives you the responsiveness that you're looking for. Um, so I'm going to hit save. Now we should get a row with three columns, which we did. And each one of them has the appropriate classes for supporting the responsiveness that I want with um, the breakpoints and stuff that I want for Bootstrap 3. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add a panel. Um, we'll use define oh, default. We'll create a heading. We'll create the body. I don't think we're using a footer. No, we're not really using a footer. Um, yeah, that should do it. Now, here it is. There's the panel. Um, I'm going to hit the space bar, or I'll just click on, actually, I'll just click on this button here. We see we have something starting to starting to appear. Uh, let's add some content. So the panel heading, I'm going to go ahead and add, um, well, let me just add some text as a child plug into this. And we're going to call that Bootstrap version 3.2.0. And let's see what that gets us. <clears throat> okay, not terribly exciting yet. Um, let me also add an icon. And which icon are we using? Check. Um, this is a pretty cool little um, widget inside of here, which allows you to select from different icon uh, systems. And in this case, we're going to choose Font Awesome. And I'm going to type in check. All right. And so now we have an icon in there. Um, let's see if that's going to do it for us. Hmm. This isn't really working out. I'm going to delete this icon, and instead, I'm going to use that same plugin inside of here. Um, this is a pretty cool little feature of Django CMS, which is plugins, text-enabled text plugins. So, 
the Alderman Bootstrap 3 plugins, some of them are text enabled, and in particular the icon one is. So you can see this is a familiar interface, we just used it. And we've selected the check, and now we can put that there. I don't exactly know why this is appearing as a star, but I did select check. I think it's because the version of Bootstrap that is being used on our system is different than the one that was used in that plugin. Um, but fortunately, it does show up correctly <clears throat> when we save it. There we go. A little bit small, and let's see if I publish changes, does it look different? Okay. So you can see we have the same header as over here, but the font size is a little bit too small. Let's fix that. And I'm just going to go here and do, I'll do heading three. Let's see if that's right. changes that's a little bit too big all right let's do uh, heading four save <clears throat> all right looks like I matched it so we have bootstrap 3.2.0 is the header of this panel now we can do the body <clears throat> um, one of the, uh, so you'll just notice I'm in I'm in the um, preview mode, and I just in order to edit this I can you can click on different parts and it will show you what part you're going to be editing. Um, I could go to here, or I could just go to here panel body. This is where I want to add that text that I copied. Um, there's no settings for this though. Uh, okay, so what we have to do is we have to add text to that. There we go. And nice, shaping up. And I happen to know it also uses a button. So I'm going to go to link button. And what is the button called? Learn more. And it doesn't have an icon or anything. It is a button though. And you can see we pretty much have the panel. But I have to go into publish changes mode to see it. Let's, let's compare. So here's ours, and there's the original. Looks pretty much identical. In fact, it, it is identical. All right, so very good. Now, um, I could go and, you know, well, why not? We'll do this. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go into structure mode. Here is our panel. I'm going to copy it, and I'm just going to paste it a couple more times in there. Oops, wait a minute. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is paste it into here and to here. So we now have three uh, columns across the width of the page, and each one of them has a panel, and they look like this. Um, let's modify them. So this is called. This one uses this uh, label, and it has the gift icon. So we can go in here and paste that and double click on this and we can change this to gift and there we go save and the other one is easy to use and it has a uh, compass icon paste and change this to compass there it is alrighty Excellent. So again, if I go into live mode, <clears throat> it's identical. These are identical to what we have in the source template. Um, the only difference being we have a carousel on the other one that we don't have here. Oh, it looks like there's some minor changes in spacing. Um, so you can see how much work it was to create these panels. They were pretty easy and the components are already there and you can pretty much do anything that you see on a bootstrap page you can pretty much do already. Um, in a later episode or, or later screencast we're going to make it even easier um, so stay tuned. Um, but let's go ahead and finish out the page. So the next thing is we have the portfolio section and so what we can do is 
our destruction mode. Now we have a second row um, uh, done. Uh, the portfolio section is going to be a whole new section. I'm going to go ahead and give it its own container. Um, so I'm going to create a new style. I'm going to call it portfolio. Again, that's just a label for you and me. <clears throat> and um, I made a copy of this. That's where I keep my title uh, page header for that section. I'm going to paste it down here. Now there's one main difference, and that is that the size of the text is the next one down. So instead of an H1, it'll be an H2. And then, of course, the text is different. We're going to be using portfolio heading. And we're going to use H, oops, we're going to use H2 here. And there it is. Okay, now uh, if we look at the source, we see that we have three columns again. We have two rows of three columns each, and each one of them contain only an image. So we can probably do this really quickly by creating one row. Actually, yeah, we can create one row. And that's our heading row. We're going to create another row, a single row this time. Can we do this? No. Um, and it's going to contain three, uh, which have, again, four, 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 and 12, much like we did before above. And inside of these, we're going to basically put a single image. Um, and that image is going to be the 700 by 450. So let me, let me move that one over. Oh, 0750 by 450? Hmm, 700 by 450. Oh, here it is. Alrighty. Okay, so, yep, there it is. All right, now I just need uh, to copy and paste this a couple times. Paste. Nice. And then, of course, we could create a new one. Now, I happen to know that if I just simply copy that whole column and then paste it, I mean, that whole row and then paste it, it will mostly work. The problem is that it won't have enough spacing between the two rows. And what we get is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new style tag. I haven't tried this before, so hopefully it'll work. Now, I happen to know that style tag also has some advanced features. In particular, it allows you to put padding bottom. I'm going to give it a 30 pixel padding. Uh, I think I'll do margin instead. And I'm going to put this uh, here. I'm going to put this inside of there. Let's see if that helps. Yay, it does. Okay, looks like we kind of messed something else up here. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to create uh, an actual container for this using um, my existing style tag. So, oh, no, actually, that's the problem. The problem is that this is a container. And it shouldn't be. So I just took the container class off of it. And now I bet it'll work. Uh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Now we're good. So, um, yeah, now we've basically created that section really quickly. In fact, it would have been even quicker if I didn't mess that up. So, um, this, this style tag is just simply giving, giving us a little bit of margin around these rows and columns. And we could probably duplicate that and do the same thing down here. Um, but I don't know if we, if we need that space. So, What's next? Modern business features. All right, let's copy this and create a new container. I'm call this modern. I'll, I'll just call it features. And 
save. And since I've already done uh, this, I will, I'm will i going to copy this row here, which is the row that contains my header, and paste it into here, and then just modify it with the correct text. All right, let's have a quick look. Things is done. Nice. All right. Now over here, um, we see that we have a two column layout. This column over here has all this text, which I'm gonna copy. And then this one over here has a, a larger of the same type of image. So that should be pretty straightforward. Structure mode, features, create a new row. Um, this time with two columns and we'll make the 12 there. Six, six, and six. Um, I'm going to add some text to this one with what I have in my clipboard. And the other one on the right will contain the image, 700 by 450, add a file, 700 by 450, save. Okay, so, um, yeah, looks great. We'll go ahead and publish changes. So now this is what our our web page would look like, our home page. Um, you remember we did not do the carousel. We'll do that later. Um, but we do have everything else that we see uh, on the store. Oh, no, we're missing this call to action. All right, so let's do a call to action. This is a well uh, in Bootstrap 3 parlance. It has uh, the well contains two columns inside of it. One of them is some text. I'll copy that in my clipboard and a button call to action. So let's do that. All right, so go back to edit mode. Structure. All right, we got features done. Um, uh, add a new container using the style tag. And this time I'm going to call it call to action just as a label. And inside of here, we're going to include one row that goes all the way across again. Inside of that column that we're creating that goes all the way across, we're going to add a well, which is one of the things that the Aldrin Bootstrap 3 gives you as a component. I think it's a large well. Let's see what we get. Okay, it looks like we have a spacing issue again, but we know how to solve that. And we do have a well, it looks like it's the right size well. Um, inside the well, we're gonna place a new row. And this time it's gonna contain two columns. I'm gonna specify them to be, well, they're gonna go all the way across when they're small, but they're gonna be only a third of the way across the rest of the time. And um, it's going to give us two, and I'm going to change the width of one of them. So the first one is really supposed to be eight uh, of the 12 columns, or two thirds across, and that leaves the other one at a third. Alrighty. And then inside the first one, we're going to add some text, which is what's in my clipboard right now. Boom. And the other one, we're going to add a button with a custom class to make it go all the way across. So we have, um, we're going to add the link button thing, and it's going to be call to action. And then down here, we can add advanced, we're going to add BTN block. Now what this does is it normally a button will will only be as wide as the text requires it plus the padding. Um, but if you use uh, this special 
uh, class, now this is a class that Bootstrap defines, then the button will stretch to fit the available space, not the available content. And in this case, it's one third width of the well, so it should be what we want. Let's have a look. Hmm, oh, you know what? I think I need to tell that to be a button, not a link. All right, um, comparing it to the other one. Okay, the text looks like a little bigger. Not a problem, double click on that. Use the large button. All right, now it looks the same. I mean, it's identical. The only difference here is um, that we have this heading rule above us and some space. Um, I guess what I would do probably in this case is just put a heading rule in there. Um, where would I do that? Probably here. Yep. So text, heading rule, and just then I just need to move it above the well instead of below. We'll see if this gets us anywhere. Okay, there's just an extra space in there, um, and I think we can fix that just by deleting uh, the extra space. So, I don't see how to do this. Nope. All right, well, I'm going to have to edit the source. So, basically, it has an extra paragraph in there for some reason. I'm just going to remove it. Um, this is probably something else I could fix by modifying the settings. Um, in this case, I'm just going to remove it. Let's see what that gets us. Nice. It's perfect. So except for the carousel at the top, which we'll do later, we've laid out all the content for this page according to the template that we started with. And that's fantastic. We are going to stop here for this screencast. In later screencasts, we'll complete the carousel. We'll add some plugins. We'll even add some applications to this to make things even easier. Um, and make more sense. Um, but right now you can see how quick it was for us to take an existing template with some content and duplicate it in a CMS fashion rather than static HTML fashion using Django CMS. See you next time.